Hello everyone. Thank you so much for coming to let me read you a story. And I am super blessed because I'm reading a book called A Collection of Bedtime Bible Stories for Children by a really well-known priest named Father Homer Rogers. Now, Father Rogers is home with the Lord right now. But Father Rogers wrote a number of really good books. Most people know his book, Romance Orthodoxy, but this is one that he had typed up with his old typewriter, and the Rogers family turned it over to us, me in the parish press, so that we could produce this book. Here is a picture of Father Rogers. For a long time, he taught at the Showdown House Seminary in Wisconsin and served as rector of St. Barnabas Church in Denton. Then he became the rector of St. Francis Church in Dallas. And his children and grandchildren, guess what? Ta-da, they're around. In fact, one of them, hello Matthew, is now ordained. Well, this one is called In the Beginning. And if you want to look at your Bible, too, it's the first chapter at the first verse of the book of Genesis, which is the first book in the Bible. And it begins by saying in the beginning. Here goes. Are you ready? All right. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, so long ago that he can remember it. So we have to depend on God to tell us what happened. Anyway, it was ever so long ago, before the fairies were born, before dreams began, so long ago that there wasn't anything in the whole wide world. In fact, there wasn't even any world, no stars in the sky, or even any sky. There wasn't anything, not even empty space, just an enormous amount of nothing except God. Nobody made him. God's always been because there has to be something before there can be anything else. You can understand that. If ever there was really nothing, absolutely nothing, well, there'd still be nothing. We mean that there was nothing except God, but God wasn't lonely, no sir, because God is a Father, a Son, and a Holy Ghost, the Blessed Trinity, and they were so happy together that they
not much. God made these angels so that there might be others with whom he could share all his fun. And God said, let's have a party. And there wasn't anybody to invite to the party, so God made a whole bunch of guests. That's the angels. Now, I'm sorry to have to tell you this. But some of God's guests were like that, but even worse. Some got very ugly and started a fight. And when they couldn't have their own way, they left the party. You might ask why God allowed these rude guests to spoil the party. Well, God is very polite and is not going to clobber his guests just because they don't like the party. So, he... Well, God replied, if these people are going to make, now are going to see, we'll have to make something for them to see by. So God said, let there be light. And they all set to work to make light. It was so pretty and it was much fun making it that they made more and more of it, just enormous amounts of it. Then one of the angels said, this light is such fine stuff. I believe we could make everything else out of it. Of course, said God. That's the idea. So they went on making more and more light until finally one of the angels said, You know, God, there's a lot more of this beautiful light that we need to make a world. What will we do with all this left over? Don't worry about it, God answered. What's left over we could put in the sky to make stars in the Milky Way and maybe a great big all of it to be the sun and that's just what they did finally God said okay that's enough light now let's begin to make some other things so they took some of the light and cooled it off and slowed it down a bit and used it to make water and earth and piling up huge chunks of rock and earth to make mountains and scattering water all over it to make 
rain, or maybe more like when you water the lawn. When you water the lawn, things begin to grow, which is what happened. God made the grass and bushes and trees, and you can imagine what fun they had making all the different kinds of growing things and painting them all green. After a while, they got out the reds and yellows and browns and began to color the trees and shrubs in these bright colors. And, and then, like when you tear out the pages of a coloring book and start over with a fresh page, well, they began all over again with green and it was spring. Then God took some of the leftover light and made a sun and a moon and lots of stars and he put them up in the sky like putting tinsel on a Christmas tree. And he gave them all a shove. And they began to go round and round. The angels clapped their hands in sheer delight and sang with joy. Next, God made the fish, letting the angels help, of course, and the tadpoles and the wiggle tails and the whales and sharks and octopuses and all the millions of different kinds of things that live in the water. He never seemed to run out of ideas for new and different things. And he never grew tired of it all. Then God made the birds, millions of them, and told them to fly around in the air and sing and build nests and lay eggs and gather seeds to eat. For God, you see, had thoughtfully already made the grass and the grain. And then God began to make animals. One of the angels said, you know, it looks just like a zoo. And God smiled and said, yes, doesn't it? And there were foxes and camels and cows and horses and dogs and cats and elephants and donkeys. And he made lots of different kinds of each of the animals like race horses and plow horses and saddle horses and hunting dogs and guard dogs and little dogs for people to hold in their laps as soon as there were people to do so. When all the world was ready with land and oceans and sun and moon properly played in the sky and the air full of birds and the land full of animals and the sea full of fish and things growing all over the place, God said, I guess that's enough things for people to see and smell and taste and hear. Now we're ready to make people. And the whole thing took only six days from the time they started. And now it was in the afternoon of the sixth day. And God got ready to make people to put in his world. But that's another story. Do you have any questions, any of you? Anything over there? Any questions? Can you hear any questions, Betty, that they're asking? Yes, of course they did it. See, this is pretty exciting, and you get to be able to see them. And I think maybe today, Betty, what we might do, because the people here don't know this, when I was reading to you, there were two ducks swimming in the yeah, swimming. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Yep. And you know what was funny? They kept coming closer because they wanted to see when it was that they were created so they would know that they're okay in swimming in the swimming pool. So we have more coming. You tune back again. And thank you, everybody out there. Give thanks today for Father Homer Rogers and for his family.